this Purdue game moving forward. Uh, this I wouldn't call it a trap game because they get a bye week after Purdue, but can they come off this high from Saturday? Can they kind of block off the outside noise as far as the, the controversy with Penn State? I think they will do that. I, I can't imagine that this is affecting the players' preparation. Um, I don't think Kirk would have brought it. Kirk Again, Kirk was asked about it, but I don't think Kirk would have even really addressed it as much as he did if he had thought that this was going to seep into the locker room or the players were distracted by this. So I don't anticipate this being a problem. I will say Purdue is a scary team. Um, I had Iowa beating them heading into this year. Remember, my preseason pred- predictions were Iowa losing to Iowa State, losing to Maryland, and losing to Northwestern. They've gotten past Iowa State and Maryland. Um, now you look at this game as a bit more of a trap game because of how big this Penn State game was. Of course, preseason, we didn't know it was going to be number three versus number four. We didn't know Iowa would be undefeated. Purdue is down its star running back, Xander Horvath. I say star running back. His biggest game of his career was probably against Iowa last year. Um, now, keep in mind, when Iowa played Purdue last year, they were down Jack Campbell. They were down Seth Benson. Um, now, they did have Nick Neiman. Uh, certainly, he helped fill a bit of that void last year, but they were playing a young Justin Jacobs and a Barrington Wade who you know, was okay at times, but boy, uh, you match up Barrington against some of these skill players in the Big Ten, he had a tough time and certainly had a tough time last year against Purdue. So Purdue threw for a lot of yards. Iowa fumbled the ball twice. That was a huge part in that game. Penalties were immense in game one last season. And remember, I don't want to say this is an excuse for Iowa losing. I don't think I ever brought this up even after Iowa lost to Purdue. But remember, the some of the Iowa players that had formed that lawsuit against Kirk Ferentz, Brian Ferentz, Gary Barta, and the uh, university, they announced that lawsuit during game prep for Purdue. So I did think that was a factor going into it. It was a road game. But... Uh, Purdue, as far as I'm aware, is down Xander Horvath for for this game once again. They do get David Bell. David Bell has 26 catches his last two appearances against Iowa for over 100 yards in each of those appearances. He's obviously uh, a weapon. We heard this week from Kirk Ferentz that Riley Moss will miss this week. Hopeful that we get him back for Wisconsin. It sounds like there's a chance that could happen. Uh, I wouldn't hold your breath, uh, but there's a chance that could happen. But he will be down for the Purdue game. So in comes Terry Roberts, who played huge late in that game against Penn State, uh, defending Jahan Dotson, who Iowa really kept in check with under 50 yards. Um, So Terry Roberts, who, you know, Kirk Ferentz has kind of viewed as a starter for quite some time, will now have to fill Riley Moss's void. And I'm not that worried about it. I will say this. Jeff Brom has an innate ability uh, to really target Iowa's weak spots in the secondary. And he's been able to do that. And I've talked about Iowa's issues in the past with its secondary and struggling to, um, you know, really shore up both sides of the field because you've had, you know, Desmond King and you have a Greg Mabin who plays well at times but could also get burned at times. You had that in 2017 and 18. Riley Moss was a victim of that against Purdue uh, one year. Matt Hankins was a victim against Purdue. I don't believe Matt Hankins will be a victim this year. Certainly, I think if you're Jeff Brom, you're going to attack Terry Roberts' side of the field. Um, and now you got to wonder if someone goes down or if Iowa has to play more dime, or even nickel, probably more dime against Purdue, who's that next guy in? I mean, is it a Jamari Harris? You know, are they comfortable? Are you comfortable with Jamari Harris? You were comfortable sending in Roberts as that nickel or that dime guy, but are you comfortable now with Jamari? Hopefully the answer to that question is yes, and certainly injuries could play a factor. Let's also remember, Purdue is pretty darn good everywhere at wide receiver. I mean, you look at Milton Wright, Double zero on the field. He's a guy who uh, can have a big day. Uh, again, we mentioned David Bell. Um, and they've got two quarterbacks they really like to throw at you in uh, O'Connell and uh, Plummer. So both those guys are healthy. Uh, O'Connell was the guy last year against Iowa. So he knows, again, he's been there, done that against Iowa. This is a scary game. I mean, I, if you're an Iowa fan, you don't want to look past this game. Um, I do think Iowa will win this game. Um, if you want my picks you want my pick for this game and the rest of the games across the college football landscape, um, stay tuned. Friday night is when I release my weekly picks for not only the Iowa game, but also all the games across the college football landscape, the major games, I should say, which, uh, again, if you're an Iowa fan, this is the biggest game of the week. I want to address real quickly, Alabama goes down. We saw Michigan struggle with Nebraska. Um, you see the West really falling behind the East. Now you got five teams from the Big Ten 
uh, East in the top 10 of the AP poll. Um, overall, what this does for Iowa, it, it does obviously strength of schedule wise. It doesn't help you that the East is far ahead of the, of the West right now. It helps you in the division race, no question. But one note here, Iowa is 3-0 against the East. Maryland, Indiana, Penn State, you could say that's not the toughest group of three teams that you have to face in the East if you're a West team, but certainly Iowa is taking care of business against each and every one of those. Alabama loses, helping Iowa's case for the playoff. But again, I said last week, I wasn't even talking about the playoff until Iowa beat Penn State. They've beaten Penn State now. They're number two in the country behind only Georgia, who plays Mike Stoops in Kentucky this week. So that conversation can be had. Um, and of course, we'll, we'll talk more and more about it with Don Patterson during our postgame shows and with Mark Rogers during our weekly live shows with him.